Welcome to my very short, very concise video about the new 90210. Now I'm not talking about the original Beverly Hills 90210, I'm talking about the one that came out a few years after that. It was the spin-off that kicked off in 2008, which was perhaps lesser known, but it was amazing and it's not really talked about on YouTube in the way that it should be considering that it had a lot of viewers and it was actually a pretty big show and yes I have talked about this before on my channel this is like a re-upload but bigger and better. Let's chat about this guilty pleasure show that I've been dying to discuss. Grab your tea, grab your biscuits, we're going to be here for a long time. I understand that some people may not have seen this show, but fear not, my loves, you will still enjoy this video because I will explain things, I will give some little summaries, and so you should still be able to follow along relatively well if you just like my videos and want to stay and watch this anyway. I don't blame you, so would I. So it's okay, you'll still understand what's going on. I'll do my best to explain. I've compiled a whopping 23 pages of notes on this show and compiled it all into one big, juicy, fabulous video. Today we're discussing where the show went wrong in later seasons and the evolutions of the key characters or how the show even sabotaged some of the best characters that they had, but then also ones that stayed good throughout as well. So let's get into what happened to this show and is it possible to have too much of a good thing? The first episode centers on Annie, the main protagonist, who's played by an actress I absolutely love called Shanae Grimes Beach, who's just, ugh, beautiful and stunning and amazing and the nicest person ever. Do I know her personally? No, but would I like to? Yes. I think she has a YouTube channel as well and she's just so cute. But we see her and her brother Dixon who've moved to Beverly Hills and they're trying to fit in but also remain true to themselves. But it's this very weird new school and they do feel out of place. And she tries to form friendships with popular girls like Naomi and then more kind of edgy girls like Silva and then Adriana who's like the musical theatre kid <laughs> version but high school and it should be going well but then she discovers that her old flame Ethan is at the school and he's dating Naomi and that sets off this rivalry enemies thing between the two girls. 90210 was no different to other shows of that period, like the early 2000s, tackling some heavy subjects like drug use, teacher-student relationships, mental illness, PTSD, but surprisingly on a rewatch, what sets this show apart from other shows of the period is that these topics were not handled as badly as I thought they would be considering it was a different time. In fact, some stuff I might say was handled quite sensitively. I mean, other things wasn't. It was a bit glamorized, sensationalized. But other stuff, I was like, you know what? Not bad. Even toxic relationships, it was pretty realistic. Season one of the show was a real gem, setting the stage for what could have been a perfect series. And it's still one of my favorite series of all time, even though I can acknowledge that it's a mess. I still love it. I don't care. I have no shame. It was juicy, it was spicy, the characters are amazing, but which often happens to be fair in shows, as it progressed the show did lose some of its spark. And it's a shame that the later seasons couldn't kind of maintain that sense of excitement and spice that made season one so special. Silver's sister Kelly is in this show and she was actually part of the original show Beverly Hills 90210 which was very nice for a sense of continuity to bring her in even though she's not really a thing in later seasons. I still liked having her there. Season one is fantastic it does a great job of developing the characters. It's the ideal teen drama, although Ethan does drag it down. He is very, very, very annoying. But we focus a lot on the relationship or anger and angst between Naomi and Annie and them kind of fighting over Ethan in a very juicy way but then they find out they're half sisters which makes things very awkward. But what I love is when you take like a bird's eye view of how their relationship evolves by season four or five they're best friends. They're like sisters. They love each other. And seeing that relationship develop into something special and 
sibling-like was actually quite beautiful. As I've mentioned before whenever I've discussed this character, Naomi is an icon. So, I was thinking, you and I should go out sometime. No thanks, but it's nice to have my pen back. But she is very selfish, she is a user, and she's extremely manipulative. I don't mean just in like a, oh, it's a phase, she'll grow out of it way, but like unusually nasty and manipulative for someone that young and so conniving. Naomi's issues and wild behavior kind of parallel what Kelly was like in the original Beverly Hills 90210. In the second season, we have new characters introduced like Teddy, who I love, and there is a shift in focus, which is really fascinating, from Annie as the main character to Naomi as the main character. I think it was because Naomi's character was so captivating that she quite literally stole the show. Season two breathes new life into the series to the point that it no longer feels like a spin-off but it's like its own original show. Then in season two a major conflict arises which separates Annie and Naomi further and it's this kind of misunderstanding thing, but it leads to her social exclusion, just not from Naomi, but from the rest of the girls too, like Adriana and Silver. Rebecca Kirshner's takeover of the show definitely mirrored how it was heading in a new direction, and we were seeing the characters fleshed out in ways we hadn't seen before, such as more of Naomi's comedic side, as opposed to this just very nasty, shark, mean girl figure we'd seen in season one. And definitely having Rebecca there changed things a lot with her running the show. She made significant creative changes when she was given the power to do so. She hired an entirely new writing staff, new set, new costumes, a new producing director, a new DP, literally everything. And she talked about how the weird thing about 90210 was that in the first season, the showrunners were slammed immediately and so everything went underwater and the characters had never been fully developed. So the first thing that she did when she took over was talk with everyone about who are these characters? Who was Annie? Who was Naomi? And that's why season two was so good in my opinion, because we got to see those characters finally be more developed. And there was a clearer sense that they had a story arc and the writers knew where they were going. Annie's character in season two and three undergoes significant development, making her one of my favorite characters in the show. She's a feisty babe and we've got to love it. She doesn't have friends. She's been excluded due to this lie, this misunderstanding, bullied. And so she seeks solace in Jasper who ends up becoming this emotionally abusive boyfriend, but she doesn't see it. She's blinded to the red flags because she's in such a low place. And so she leeches onto that relationship more than she normally would because she's feeling so unwhole, so sad that she's looking for any kind of joy. And so she definitely, I can tell you by the way, he was crusty. She would not have liked him before. Like when she was living in Kansas, she never even would have looked twice in Jasper's direction. But due to a few factors and also a guilty conscience, due to a hit and run, she feels very like attached to him in a way that I don't think she usually would have. Annie's insecurities and her seeking validation is very much highlighted in the second season. Her just going off the walls and being a bit reckless and doing things that she wouldn't normally do. Rebecca Kushner also expressed her interest in Annie as a means to explore how teenage girls utilize their sexuality to alleviate feelings of loneliness. And we see that with this nude getting leaked around of Annie and her engaging with this guy she wouldn't normally pay attention to, then her dating Jasper and spending all this time with him pouring so much into him. Another thing I really find interesting about season two is the Teddy Silver relationship developing. They were one of my favorite couples of the entire show and I feel like they made each other better as characters. Whenever they were on screen together I was like I love them. I admit I didn't care much for Silver but when she started dating Teddy and I saw this relationship develop between them I understood what was so great about her. And Liam's character development is truly captivating as we see him take down Naomi's evil sister, Jen. We see Silver's tumultuous relationship with her mother. We see Dixon, who actually has good storylines that season. So season two was clearly a standout, but I really loved season three as well. It's hard to pick a favorite between the two because they offer different dynamics that are equally compelling. Season three, Teddy's having this realization that he might be gay. That's so sad. <laughs> I love that they have gay characters in the show, but please, why Teddy? His relationship with Silver was amazing. And I was like, really? Please, couldn't you have made like 
literally anyone else gay other than him. Like, oh, I was so bummed about that. But also I'm glad they have some representation in the show. Adriana's career as this musical theater kid has taken off and she's becoming famous. But her character, her personality is now declining. She's excelling as this mean character who's becoming very vain, very caught up in fame. And her career was her primary focus, but now we see that it's becoming too much of a focus and she's stealing people's songs, doing things she shouldn't be doing, behaving in a way that morally she should not be okay with. But I was okay with that because Adriana could be really boring in the later seasons when she was too nice and had nothing going on and she does work as a mean girl. And then obviously season three we have Mr. Cannon who's this extremely evil teacher that I don't even like talking about. But I don't mean that in a way of oh it was badly written. I mean it was so good, it was so well written how creepy he is that I, I remember being 15 and watching that show and watching how creepy he was and watching how he was with Naomi and I was like not scarred because that implies it was traumatizing or damaging it wasn't but I just mean I was so struck by how scary he was that it still like haunts me to this day because it just felt so real. Season three gives us major romance vibes with Liam and Annie and also Naomi and Max both of which are some of my favorite TV couples of all time. I think they're amazing. But then there's season four and things kind of take a nosedive. Not saying the show's suddenly garbage but Without Rebecca Kirshner who stepped down, the show doesn't feel the same. Patty Carr and Lara Olsen take over but they bring a different vibe and new characters that didn't necessarily make the show better. And more characters start hooking up with each other out of the blue. This show already had a lot of very intertwined and meshed relationships where everyone has dated everyone but it was kind of a new level in season four. For example the Liam and who was it Liam and Silver pairing that just didn't make much sense and it was honestly not needed and it was kind of gross. And Dixon and Adriana getting together really felt like it came out of left field. And the good relationships that we adored before that were the best of all time like Liam and Annie and Naomi and Max were just thrown aside as if they didn't matter or as if the showrunners didn't realize what gems they had with those relationships that they developed them too well to just throw them away. Annie and Liam finally kiss in season four but the build-up wasn't what it was supposed to be it just came out of nowhere. Don't even get me started on Liam becoming a famous model and actor out of the blue and Naomi's weird rivalry with this sorority girl that didn't mean anything. They seem to have forgotten about Annie's dreams of becoming an actress. Seasons four and five are full of questionable moments with characters making impulsive decisions that probably wouldn't have happened in earlier seasons. And the worst part, the forced relationship between Liam and Silva. Not only did they, let's say, hook up because they were bored or something, but Liam was obsessed with Silva and declaring that she might be the one. Liam should have known better considering that his friend Naveed probably still had feelings for Silva and Silva should have known better because she knew about Liam's history with Annie. And the whole I love you phrase gets thrown around way too easily in this show. Now let's get into season five. One of the good things about season five is it brings a sense of closure and continuity by wrapping up subplots that had been left kind of unfinished from previous seasons and I love it when shows do that. It's much cleaner when you rewatch it. For example characters like Jasper and Emily who had been absent for a while make a return. We see Naomi and Annie clearing up things with their long lost half brother. Annie continues to deal with her interactions with Patrick who she'd had interactions with before when she was an escort. But the repetitive nature of some character arcs became very apparent. There's also a very bizarre filler storyline where Naomi tries to bond with Mark through this food truck. It's like this business venture and then things get messy because they crash the truck when the back catches fire and the whole thing's a bit, even as I'm saying it, I'm like the whole thing's a bit naff, like that's just a bit, what even is that? Even dumber, Liam gets kidnapped by a fan who becomes obsessed with him when he's famous and the fan plans to ship him to Mexico in a crate. <laughs> what? I just realized how dumb that sounds. What bugs me more is that Ivy, who was a very significant character in early seasons, is just not 
present in season five. She just left, like, where did she go? Did she run away with her boyfriend Diego after he got deported? I don't know. Now onto the finale of the show. Not the worst I've seen, not the best either. You can tell it was rushed. They had to wrap everything up quickly because they realized there wasn't gonna be a season six. So they were like, oh, okay, quick, <laughs> you can tell. Dixon and Silver keep having these interactions with a romantic subplot, insinuating they're going to get back together, but it doesn't really properly happen. And we were all expecting it to because they've been like one of the main couples of the series since the beginning, but it just leaves it feeling very kind of up in the air. You can tell the writers just ran out of time in that episode to flesh everything out, and that's why they sort of left it there. And Silver's arc in the finale is pretty heartbreaking. Now, do I love Silver's character? No. But I liked her, like she's okay. And I just feel like she did not deserve what happened to her in the finale. Finding out she has cancer, what kind of an ending is that? Especially because I know, I mean, there's a reason she's in this show. There are loads of fans who love her. How awful for them seeing their favorite character have an ending in this way. Silver's had health problems because her mum had cancer, so she had to deal with that. Then she had her own fertility issues, and now another health crisis with the cancer thing at the end. Like, come on. Max and Naomi, who should have ended up together, don't. And Naomi has this subplot with Jordan, this rando, which feels very unrealistic and really cheapens her romantic storylines and her arc in general. And then we have the big emphasis on the most important moment of the finale, which is Liam and Annie getting together and they're gonna get married and he's got a ring and all this bloody bloody blah. I know I should be happy, but this resolution for them was so anticlimactic. Liam needed so much kind of encouragement and egging on from people to realize Annie's worth, which is not something he should have needed encouragement to feel. Like it should have just been there from the outset. Also, Annie has this whole I want to be a writer book subplot thing, which just again was not developed enough. In this book Annie was writing, she she self-inserted herself and she wrote this ending where her and Liam ended up together. Liam needed so much encouragement from others to read the book and see what the fairy tale ending would be. That always bothered me because I feel like, wouldn't you be curious to see what Annie wrote about you considering she was someone you loved? Wouldn't you wonder how she portrayed you in her book? But I am still happy that they ended up together and it, it definitely did save the finale for me. So now let's get into each character starting with Annie. I know people have mixed feelings about Annie but personally I love her. I think she's a queen. Her parents really annoy me in season one because they're so controlling and smothering but it definitely brings an interesting element to her character because she must feel suffocated in that house I'm telling you. But we have this whole hit and run thing in the finale of season one when Annie's really devastated and not thinking straight and she hits this homeless guy with her car and drives off and in season two we see the ramifications of this crime on Annie and the guilt that consumes her because she knows she messed up. Annie's situation in season two is incredibly frustrating. Not just because she's being bullied, but because everyone believes that she slept with Liam based on such little evidence and she was insisting she hadn't and no one is hearing her out. What bothers me the most is her reluctance to confide in her parents, even though her dad has lots of experience as a principal dealing with this kind of stuff before, maybe he could have helped. The highlight of season two is when Annie finally proves her innocence to Naomi, repairing their damaged friendship. However, Annie's decision to finally confess about the hit and run is never really resolved. We don't see that take place on screen, which leaves us feeling very left out of the loop considering this was such a big storyline for her. Later we know that Annie spent the summer under house arrest and certain things that she was being punished for what she did but since we didn't see that happen we didn't see it play out like the consequences of what she did. We miss out on the aftermath which is a big letdown in terms of storytelling and there's this kind of issue again in season three where Annie's being misunderstood and or hurt or bullied and no one's hearing her out when Emily comes to town and everyone loves Emily but Emily's bullying Annie and Annie's the only one smart enough to see what's going on and again no one's believing her not even her own parents and that just annoyed me because it's that same cycle of 
Annie not being listened to, Annie getting angry and lashing out and making it worse, but she's actually in the right, but she's so consumed by her emotions and irrational that no one's hearing her out. And it just annoys me because I was like, we've already seen this. And I don't mean this in, oh, it's bad writing, but I mean, I just felt so bad for her. It was more that I was just incredibly frustrated that no one was listening to her. In season four, Annie's still struggling with her acting career, which feels really stagnant. Like earlier, we saw her doing all this theater and being really passionate and being an amazing singer, but it just doesn't seem to be happening for her. And so her interest in becoming a writer feels very kind of out of the blue. She's also facing a lot of bullying from Jeremy now, who's trying to take her inheritance from her, but Annie stands up to him. And that's one of my favorite things about Annie. And actually that was one of her standout storylines because no matter what Annie's put through, no matter how many people try to take advantage of her and walk over her, she doesn't let them. In season five, Annie, um, starts a relationship with Riley, which I actually found really heartwarming. But then he dies super randomly of a blood clot right after things start getting serious between them. And I felt like that was such a cop out. And I hate it when shows do that, like develop something, make it actually good, like genuinely, like they nail it and then they ruin it. And Annie then has too many love interests throughout the series, which makes her storylines feel very scattered and I don't love it. But one of the highlights of Annie's character is her relationship with Liam, which is, oh, <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, it's like, ooh. He's this bad boy, she's this good girl. It's such a cliche and I was living for it when I was a teenager. And they're both so damn adorable. And I love that she calls him out and encourages him to be more mature and better. And then he brings out a more playful kind of wild side of her. I just love it. And they're one of my favorite couples ever actually. I also love their transition from enemies to lovers. Annie still harbors concerns about Liam being a risky or dangerous individual and a lot of their relationship developing is Liam trying to prove to her that he can be better and overcome his dark past and that he's not that guy. However, from season four onwards, their relationship is very mishandled by the writers and it's very clear that the writers didn't know what a good thing they had. Like they had no idea. Someone needed to tell them, no one was telling them. They didn't know what they created. Annie and Liam are kind of separated, but for a long time, so their connection dwindles and fades away a bit because it's too long that they're separated. So at some point, the tension died. And then when they do rekindle their relationship, I think the writers were going for spontaneous, but it actually just felt rushed. And at a few points, Liam was treating Annie quite poorly, not gonna lie or being impulsive and rushing relationship decisions, which I also didn't love. Next character, I'm just gonna get this one out the way real quick. So I tried to summarize it in two paragraph, para, <laughs> paragraphs, so we can talk about him for as short a space of time as possible because he irks me and I don't need to be getting mad. But it's Ethan, Ethan, do you guys remember Ethan? You might be like, Who's Ethan? Exactly, exactly. Because he was literally just in season one and never came back. He just disappeared off the face of the earth, which is still hilarious to me to this day. But let's show some photos of Ethan. So you know who I'm talking about. Do you remember Ethan? Ethan, yes. I literally forgot who he was too. Don't worry. I was like, oh yeah, that guy when the show started. By the way, I forgot to say this. Did you guys know that Meghan Markle appeared in the, this is so random, in the pilot episode of the show? She was giving a guy like, was it Ethan? Who was it? I think she was giving someone a blowjob in the back of a car when Annie arrives at school. And then she lifts her head up and you see it's Meghan Markle. And I was like, acting debut? Starting it off with a bang, I see. Also, Lily Collins appears as a mean girl in season one and she looks like such a baby. But anyway, moving on, Ethan. He's so annoying, by the way, literally so annoying. So his Naomi's love interest and Annie's love interest in the beginning. And he's at the center of this love triangle because he's apparently a prize, which will never not be funny to me because come on, look at him, like really ladies. He was, I mean, not that he's unattractive, not at all, but he was just so annoying and indecisive and just really, but also a great character though, because he's the epitome of the confused 16, 17 year old high school boy who has never, had a serious relationship. And you can tell because he just doesn't know what he's doing. Like Naomi's his first relationship and he's winging it. He's like, what does it mean to have a girlfriend? What does it mean? What am I looking for? Who am I? 
should I be dating at all? Like that whole teenage boy crisis, which was perfectly encapsulated, is actually very funny because he just he's just not ready to date and the one thing i do like is that he says to i think annie towards the end before his character leaves i've been dating since i was 14 years old like i need to stop and be single for a while and figure out who i am like true words were probably never spoken because that's what happens when you don't find yourself from a young age but he was very all over the place, very douchey. Unintentionally so, he was a douche. Like, he was with Naomi, then he was with Annie and then back with Naomi again. Very all over the place, kind of needed to know what he was doing. And then he loses interest in both of them and becomes obsessed with Silver in like the final episode, which was very out of nowhere. It just completely fell head over heels for her. Now, in some ways, he and Silver would actually have made a great couple because she could be very all over the place. And so he was also very all over the place. And to be fair, they had a lot of chemistry and their kissing was very good. So I'm actually a bit bummed that wasn't more of a thing because if, you, if you've seen the kissing, I don't know if I can insert the scene or not, but you, you'll know what I mean. It was very like full of passion. So it's a bit of a shame he left the show. But I did think it was very, very lame how he kept saying, I need to find myself, I need to find myself. But he never actually was. And then he just jump into another relationship thing again. And it was just very annoying. Like, I don't know what it is about him, but he's aggravating and I don't want to talk about him anymore. We're going to have an interval now, so go get yourself a snack or something and then I'll be here waiting, of course. The next character I want to talk about is Liam, who's a major love interest of the series. And he is fascinating because of how much he changes. Because at the beginning, he's very much this bad boy who's working in bars when he should be in school and racing cars and doing stuff he shouldn't be doing. But rather than being the typical, yeah, I don't care about school, I'm an idiot, he's actually, this is what I like about him, he's really smart, but you wouldn't know it, but he's actually really intelligent. It's just that he doesn't bother utilizing his intelligence. Like he could try so much harder in school than he does. He just chooses not to, like he doesn't make the effort. It's like he he's cocky or something, or he just doesn't try. He's very emotionally unavailable. He doesn't want a relationship with Naomi and he's very immature, but you also see this kind of endearing side to this immaturity because it's really obvious that underneath he's just this scared little kid who has no idea what he's doing. Like the act is really good because he his boyishness is kind of disguising this kind of vulnerability you know oh my gosh you know who he reminds me so much of is Damon Salvatore from the Vampire Diaries and what's crazy is I've been obsessed with him and obsessed with Damon <gasps> do I have a type because I kind of felt the same about Captain Hook from Once Upon a Time do you guys see you see what I mean right and Nathaniel from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend oh my god I'm just out here exposing myself on the internet. They're just the best fictional crushes because they've got so much depth, you know? It's like the mysterious, I don't care exterior. And then underneath, they're just a big softy and it's so cute. But he and Naomi date first before he gets with Annie. And he and Naomi did not have a good relationship dynamic. And it was hilarious how it was just her basically chasing him and he wasn't really making an effort. And then he did actually grow to really care about her and love her. But I feel like they didn't quite, like he didn't quite challenge her enough and their relationship just wasn't very mature it wasn't very it was emotional but it somehow it wasn't intellectual enough like I don't know how to explain it but they just weren't right for each other you also start to see in season two a more comedic side of Liam the fact that when he's often having one of his moods and he's being grumpy and irritable there is something really hilarious about that for example whenever they have to take photographs or go to a social event often he doesn't want to be there like a charity gala Naomi's there loving it and Liam just wants to go home they were doing this auction where they were auctioning off guys to the girls in the audience this charity thing Liam did not want to be there and then when Silver was kind of marketing Liam she said he likes surfing he's brooding and mysterious and he likes curling up with a good book and at that last part Liam looked disgusted and he was like no I don't <laughs> 
which I thought was so funny because you could tell he was thinking, I've never read a book in my life. Who wrote this? Like, who? I don't do that. It's the same thing with prom where everyone's posing and taking photos and Liam literally looks like he wants to drop dead. It's very funny. But season four is when things start to go downhill. And this is potentially one of my biggest issues with Once Upon a Time is what happens to Liam because I used to be obsessed with this boy. Like I was obsessed with him and I was so disappointed with how they handled his character because they really dumb him down. Initially Liam did have a bit of like a dumb side but it was kind of natural whereas he becomes a caricature of his formal self like just so dumb. The minute he becomes this movie star model they just made him pretty boy who's not very smart and I hate it because to me Liam was so much more than that he wasn't just a pretty face he wasn't just a poster boy. What made him appealing in earlier seasons was his street smart nature and his wittiness and he just completely lost that. Even the actor Matt Lanter has acknowledged in interviews that his character isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. For example in season four despite discovering that Vanessa hit him with her car and lied about it Liam decides to give her another chance. During a camping trip he struggles with really basic tasks like opening cans and then he has very impulsive behavior like punching paparazzi and is actually shocked when his behavior has consequences. It's like, babe, babe, what did you think was gonna happen? Wh <laughs> what? And in season four, things hadn't been going so well with Annie, so he leaves for a while. Then he thinks about it, comes back, and just plops a ring down on the hood of the car, like, there you go. <laughs> She's so confused. She's like, are you proposing? What's going on? He's like, yeah, he, he didn't even say like, explain, say, will you marry me? He just pops the ring down. Obviously she's confused. And then he tries proposing again later in front of everyone publicly just to make it really clear what he's trying to do. And she's like, oh, I'm, wh why? No, I don't want this. Because obviously he just fucked off and left and now he's back. It's all very confusing for her. And he actually gets mad at her for being confused. And his proposal was out of the blue. Like you need to explain. You can't then be mad at her for being confused. And and to make matters worse, later we discover that Liam's proposal to Annie was a compensation for his emotional infidelity driven by his guilt for being with another woman when he shouldn't have been. Well, he hadn't been with her, but he developed feelings for her. And instead of handling the situation maturely like an adult, he decided to just overcommit to Annie and propose. And when he does go back to that woman he had feelings for, he kind of disregards her as if her feelings didn't matter, disregarding Annie in the same way, and the whole thing was just a disaster. And again, him and Silver become a thing which just was terrible, it made him look like the worst guy ever, and I was not a fan. It happens like twice in season five where Liam has this weird hate sex with someone where it's someone he doesn't like, he does it with Vanessa and then that lawyer woman where they're kind of bickering at each other but it's disguising some attraction and then they just bang it out like I hate to sound crude but that's literally like what they do in the show and it's just ugh, it's a bit weird like when you consider the track record of the show because they had this other situation with a teacher called Ryan and he had a student in his class she was a student he was a teacher he kept kind of insulting her picking on her singling her out a bit and then later he found out that she was undercover and she actually wasn't a student at all and she was 25. the first thing he does when he finds this out is ask how old are you then she tells him her real age and then they just start making out which shows that underneath all the bickering there was actually this attraction there to her but that's weird though because he thought she was a student the whole time and now he's acting on those thoughts he was having and like eh, it's a little bit strange and in season two Naomi was dating this guy who looked about 50 when she was what like 17 18 maybe not even 18 season two Dixon's dating a grown woman called Sasha when he's 17 and what made it worse is he lied to her about it like he was full on like it was so messed up pretending he was a record producer and that he owned a car and all this stuff that wasn't even true we know from season one that Ethan and Jen were a thing so he was probably like 14 and she was maybe 20 which is super messed up but anyway let's let's go back to Liam because I've sidetracked one thing that really annoys me about Liam again later is his stupidity for instance during an argument with Vanessa she falls off the balcony hits the rocks below he thinks she's dead she looks pretty dead Liam calls 911 one then changes his mind 
after dialing the number. So he provides his full name on the phone, stating there's been an accident. Then, inexplicably, changes his mind and cancels the call. <laughs> what happens when they find her body? You've just called them and told... Like, the reason why it annoys me so much is because he was not this dumb before. I swear, old Liam would never. He would never. So this baffles me because emergency calls like that are always recorded, leaving a trace. And surely, please tell me, he's smart enough to know that. Moreover, reporting the incident as a fool wouldn't land him in jail. It was an accident, so I don't know... Even if it wasn't, how's anyone supposed to know that? So I don't know why he couldn't just report it. I seriously doubt. Like, it looks like an accident. He's a very attractive, young, white male. Like, I really doubt that he would have ended up in prison. The next character is Silver. It's crazy how much Silver changes over the show as well because I disliked her a lot more in season one than I did by the end of the show. You can really see how much she grew and I'm happy about that. For example, season one, she is very much like I'm not like the other girls syndrome as in not only is she saying that but the show's making her out to be really quirky and trying to set herself apart from other girls or not like traditional girl things and it is cool that she's kind of separated from the other girls but then by the end of the show she is very much a girl's girl and she is close with them it shows that she overcame that and that term in general not like other girls is very misogynistic because who wouldn't want to be like other girls women are amazing like please make me like other girls do you know what i mean it's a good thing but also maybe she was just reflecting those beliefs and that harmful societal stuff and she'd internalized it but she did learn which is good and she did a lot of stuff in season one that was really messed up and I was like, oh, I'm not okay with that. That was so impulsive. That was so not on. But what made it better is that we, rather than just having her do stuff that wasn't so great, she got a diagnosis with bipolar disorder, which definitely helped because it gave, it gave an explanation as to why she was behaving in the way that she was behaving rather than just her doing that in a vacuum and us just being really lost as to why she was having all these mood swings. So I'm really glad they explained it. One thing I didn't like about her, which I don't think was due to the bipolar thing, it was just more her being a bit snaky, but she tends to jump ship a lot like she'll be friends with Naomi and Annie and then the minute Annie's under fire she'll just ditch Annie and it, it seemed like she couldn't pick a side at points especially in the earlier seasons but in season two she really steps up her game with Teddy they have this amazing relationship it made me see her in a different light and I was like damn also her haircuts always slayed I love her hair <laughs> she's beautiful she is beautiful full you know who she looks like she looks like spencer hastings from pretty little lies a little bit a little bit but yeah she's gorgeous but some of her storylines really brought her down like her and naveed i thought were the most annoying couple ever don't know why i just think naveed's annoying in general but him combined with silver who could also be annoying was just like 10 times worse i wanted her to be with teddy i was so committed to her and teddy and i think it's a shame that in a way that like he was the one that was gay because I was like but they would have been perfect like why couldn't like Liam have been gay or Dixon or or someone one of the other main guys Ethan if you made him better like a better character do you know what I mean like why Teddy but here's the thing another reason why it bothered me that Silver would be in a relationship with Naveed is because she was friends with Adriana for years and Adriana and Naveed were like soulmates and so it was really messed up of her and Naveed to start dating on both both ends I'm not just shaming her I'm shaming him too very much so even more so actually I'm shaming him but what I don't like about it is the massive double standard with how everyone comes down so hard on Annie she's so massively punished for something she didn't even do but then no one's really mad at Silver for having a thing with Naveed even though that was like proven and it was far worse because it was this actual relationship not just a hookup She's still got her friends, no one's excluding her, she's not punished to nearly the same degree. And also it's her attitude around it, that's what I mean, it's why, oh, I just can't get behind her. It's not just the fact that she was with him, it's the fact that she seemed to show no guilt or emotion or regret about it whatsoever. And that's kind of a pattern with Silver, I hate to say it, I hate to say it because I know so many of you guys love her, so I'm sorry. But what bothers me too is when she's at college in the fourth season, season sorry, she starts dating this older guy who has a child and then she finds out that the mother of his child is Adriana and Silver's just totally cool with this, just doesn't care. Even though Adriana's really uncomfortable because she's like, 
that's my child who I didn't really want to give up. Like, of course I knew I had to give her up, but I was devastated to give her up. And I don't like the idea of you raising my child because that's the thing, Silver wasn't just dating this guy. She was planning on moving in with him and maybe getting really involved with this child. And that's just messed up because that's her like taking on the mother role when, you know, her friend Adriana was the biological mother and wasn't comfortable with it. But then in season four, it gets real bad when Silver and Liam sleep together. What was that? What a travesty, first of all. What a travesty. Second of all, no chemistry. Who came up with that? Fire them. Put them in the trash. Like, get them in a trolley and wheel them out. Like, to Mexico. Like, get rid of them. Do you know what I mean? Like, please deport them. Like, no, absolutely not. Like, put them in the trash. Because her and Liam seemed like friends and I was like, how lovely to have for once in this show a platonic guy-girl friendship where there's no weird intent, no weird motivations, just pure platonic love. <laughs> That's a joke. Boy, was I wrong because apparently a guy and a girl can't be friends without some kind of like sexual undertone. And the worst part is how Silver's like, no, I don't want you, Liam. Actually, I do want you. Actually, no, I want Naveed. Make up your mind. They're fighting over her. Naveed and Liam, which is by the way so cringy, like stop, you're embarrassing yourself, both of you. And they basically say, look Silva, you need to choose one of us. <laughs> what the, it's so lame, you've, it's so like, we can't stoop any lower at this point, like the bar is in hell, you know what I mean? But Silva's like, hmm, how will I choose? Doesn't really care about either of them, just loves the attention. And then she realizes that she actually really does want to have a baby. So she'll basically pick whichever of them wants to have a baby with her, which why why would they do that unless they're really pathetic which Naveed is apparently but Liam like you just hooked up with him like why would he want to have a baby with you okay and then when they're not really sure she has the nerve to act disappointed and angry at them like yeah that's what I thought <laughs> like like I don't know why are you shocked that this is a lot for them to process like I would I would need to take a pause too if I'd been propositioned with that and what I don't like is it shows that Silver's literally taking the leftovers of her friends, which is not fair on Silver because she deserves to be first choice, but she's always second choice. Like, it's so weird. For example, Ethan, okay, Ethan, hear me out. Ethan dates Annie first, then goes to Naomi, then goes back to Annie, then goes back to Naomi, then Silver at the last minute. Naveed, obsessed with Adriana since he was a kid, like weirdly crushing on her, kind of puts her on a pedestal, whatever dates her and then picks Silver but afterwards Liam he had Naomi he had Annie and then finally Silver after not noticing her for like five years that's not Silver's fault okay it's not but it doesn't reflect well on her character and then she starts treating Teddy badly too with this whole I want to have a baby storyline that did her no favours. And when Teddy doesn't want to have a baby with her, she's thinking of forging his signatures as a donor and it was so messed up. Like, why does she treat people that she's close to like shit sometimes? Especially people like Teddy who she has such a good relationship with throughout the show. Like, why would you ruin that? Why would you sabotage it? It just made me sad and that was just not okay. But I also felt bad because there were points like where when people wanted to get back at her, they would mess with her medication. Like Adriana would mess with her medication. And I feel like Adriana's the worst, first of all, but that's the lowest of the low. Like how messed up do you have to be to get back at someone by messing with their medication or swapping their medication like I can't even imagine but anyway the next character is Naomi we need to talk about her I'm saving her towards the end because she's just amazing oh, the clothes the body the outfits the sass the attitude the confidence I'm obsessed femme fatale queen icon she is everything I want to be in life and more I love this woman and I could literally go on about her for hours but I'm aware you guys have like meetings to get to and stuff so I'm gonna keep it short okay like I said this is a super short video not but she is just oh I I'm so crushing on her like she's amazing every line of dialogue that this girl utters I swear is perfect like absolutely perfect just iconic one-liners just just drops them left and right honestly it's like she's not even trying. As the series progresses, we shift, as I said earlier, from Annie being the main character to Naomi being the main character. And no wonder, she just takes over the screen. She was like, yeah, 
this is my show now. You thought it was called 90210? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, this is the Naomi show. Like literally, she just runs it by the end and I have no complaints. I also find it really funny because it's so contradictory that she is the most flirtatious, confident, femme fatale kind of figure in the show, yet she will chase after literally every man that she's ever dated. Ethan, Liam, Max, some guy called Peyton. <laughs> And this makes her more relatable. This is why we love Naomi, because no matter how beautiful she is or how funny she is, she gets insecure too. And she wonders if the guy that she likes, likes her back. Then, oh, we need to introduce him. But then we have season three, Mr. Cannon, that crusty manky man. They have a very kind of antagonistic relationship at the beginning, which leads to her lying and saying that he was this kind of creep and she gets in huge trouble for this. She was literally the girl who cried wolf, like the lie escalates and she was like, damn it. Like she did not realize that her complaint against him would be taken so seriously. But what makes it worse is he uses that to his advantage because now she's known as like the liar of the school. So then he RAPEs her and he basically says, even if you do tell anyone who's gonna believe you, which still makes me feel sick, like it was so messed up. But what I really like about this storyline is not only was it very well developed, but it was very clever because we had her kind of call him out, have him be exposed. And so he disappears for a while, like he's on the run. And then the storyline moves on. So I completely forgot that this guy existed. He, I just thought maybe they, the show had forgotten about him too. Then he suddenly comes back to try and like kidnap Naomi basically and take her hostage and get money from her, which I totally did not expect. Like I thought he was gone. And so then Silver comes to kind of save her and they basically get rid of him and justice was served. But the reason why I pointed out is because this was so cohesive and well done compared to other storylines in the show later. Like it was paced really well and it was a really good opportunity for Naomi's character development as well to make her a more kind of empathetic character. What I like too is unlike Pretty Little Liars, this show didn't make him out to be sexy and incredible. It made him a criminal and a creep and had him rightfully facing accountability for his actions. This is the interesting part. The actress who plays Naomi actually has disassociative identity disorder and she had actually been RIPE'd herself when she was younger, but she hadn't really properly processed it. And so those memories didn't start resurfacing for her until she was filming and working on this project. And she had experienced traumatic events in her childhood as well, but filming this made her really face what had happened when she was 19, except it wasn't a teacher that had done it to her, it was actually someone that she considered a male friend. And she didn't realize that she was kind of disassociating and experiencing splits until she started working on this show. And she said, I didn't even realize I was doing it at all until I did 90210. And so subsequently the actress has gone on to do extensive therapy and medication and all those things to address this but I think it's really interesting that working on the show made her aware of this in a way that she hadn't been before and she is amazing by the way I love this actress but anyway then season three we have Max and Naomi dating and they are one of the best couples of all time I'm obsessed words don't even cover it if soulmates exist like they would be it. Do you know what I mean? Like they are soulmates to me. What I love is that he's a nerd or a less popular guy and she's the popular girl, but yet he's not like the stereotype of the nerd with no social skills. He's more of a geek. He's charming, he's confident, and he has great social skills. So he's not the stereotype and that's what I love about him. And he doesn't idolize her or fetishize her. And what makes it even more amazing is normally in these movies with this kind of trope, the nerd guy's like, please, how do I get this popular girl to like me? He's the opposite. He's like, do I even like you? Like, I think you're a bit too ditzy for me. I don't know. You're kind of annoying. I don't know. And she's chasing him because he actually has self-respect. He doesn't want someone shallow. And what's crazy is she isn't really sure that he'll fit in with her social circle, that he'll bring down her popularity status. Rather than him being all upset, like, oh, please include me. I want to be popular. He's like, uh, I don't know if you fit my like my vibe Naomi I don't know if I want us to be public he believes that she wouldn't fit into his friend group and he wants to maintain his reputation which is so funny and completely unexpected it's a total reverse of the stereotype that makes their relationship totally unique but then disaster strikes because the writers botched their relationship too and I'm so 
sad about it and it's been like it's so pathetic it's been like five years and i'm still upset about this <laughs> okay just let me just let me be upset okay because i love these two so much and i'm just tearing up okay so let me have my moment it's totally understandable and if you've seen this show you will know what i mean okay <sighs> I feel like the writers were actually being mean. Like, why were they being mean to us? Like, they were playing games. Why were they playing games? <sighs> like, don't mess with them like that. They're a power couple. Like, don't break my heart. So, they keep breaking up for stupid reasons. Just dumb, convoluted plots like Naomi breaking up his wedding and him impulsively dating someone shallow even though he said he would never date someone shallow and then coming back to Naomi. Then them getting married too young and rather than them just doing marriage counselling like Max suggested, they just call it quits. Which makes no sense! I'll calm down. Which makes no sense! Because even when they were divorcing, they were still so in love they couldn't fully let go of the other. And they were still hooking up randomly and then being like, yeah, yeah, that's the last time and then doing it again or being like, oh, you look so hot. Isn't it such a shame we're getting divorced? Yeah, but we're just too young. You're literally there saying, you're so amazing. Isn't it such a shame we're getting divorced? Do you know how divorced couples talk? They don't talk like that. And it's the fact that it's not, I understand it's a long show, they may need to have some ups and downs, but it's the fact they just don't get back together that pisses me off. Even the actress Anna Lynn, she records an alternate spoof ending where she filmed herself getting off a plane and kind of running into Max's arms because she, as the actress, shipped these two so much that she wanted them to be together and wanted to give the fans their sense of like... I guess resolution, which I thought was so lovely of her by the way, it really shows how much she cares about her character after playing her for so many years. Now the next character is Dixon. Dixon's character arc is really intriguing. In season 4 Dixon has this struggle with a drug dependency which feels quite repetitive after Adriana's very similar arc in season 1. His stubbornness and seeking help does add to his character because it's a re recurring trait of his but also it gets quite frustrating to watch also with his general obliviousness to many things like Adriana cheating on him. There are also moments where his actions seem contradictory like when he was breaking up with Silver but kind of in a way where he keeps things to himself rather than talking to her about it. Like he doesn't express his concerns earlier and then it flares up and he just breaks up with her let's say. So he's not a perfect character, he could be really dumb sometimes but despite his flaws he's a really good guy and my favourite part is actually his relationship with his sister Annie because he's like her ride or die. He has such protective instincts towards Annie especially when dealing with Liam's advances. Like he refuses to let Liam off the hook for mistreating Annie which I really love. But despite this I don't have much to say about Dixon because I feel like he feels quite underdeveloped especially compared to characters like Liam or Naomi who just go through a lot. Considering that Dixon's Annie's brother and he's a very prominent character I think that they could have given him more depth than they did because even now like there's still just not that much to say about Dixon. Like he's a great guy and all but I wish that there was more I could say. But he's nowhere near as bad as Naveed so it's okay let's count our blessings. Because the next character is Naveed and he may be one of my least favourite characters in the whole show if I'm entirely honest. I know some find him endearing, I just found him annoying basically the whole way through, I'm sorry if any of you out there are Naveed fans, I just found him infuriating. I mean I, I like the actor but not the character, like even his obsession with Adriana in season one and him constantly going on about being single or being a virgin, like please, I mean this sincerely, shut up. <laughs> shut up like no one cares and he just kept like trying to be cool and I was like no oh and when he started dating Silver behind Adriana's back I was like wow this man I thought he was kind of endearing and cute but he's actually conniving and like a total jerk he has this storyline in season four when his spoiled sister comes to live with him and Silver and she was literally the most annoying caricature of a teenager I've seen in a long time and it was just really irritating. Also Naveed starts becoming really whiny around season 4 especially when it came to like trying to get Silver back or get Silver to like him just super annoying. In general him with women is annoying and Naveed did some really bad shit too like him sharing around this 
this new type or whatever of Liam to get back at Liam for some petty revenge like why Liam was famous at that point so the ramifications of that in his career would have been huge like it's not just social embarrassment it's his career at stake as well and his reputation as an actor model so I was just like Naveed what are you doing like you're so vindictive and then when let's say he is a good character and he's being super sweet and nice and he can be really nice throughout seasons four and five some of his storylines are so dull and uneventful I literally like I'm bored now talking about it I've just got nothing to say I think my favorite moment of Naveed's is in season five during the explosion at Adriana's concert when he goes into the rubble to save her and then kind of confesses his love for her still after all this time I mean they were, they were really boring but something about his unwavering commitment to her must have kind of manipulated me into thinking they were a good couple because they suddenly grew on me at the end and I was like well he still likes her so um I guess I guess that means they are a good couple you know because like he always seems to come back to her like no matter what it will always be Adriana you know and I thought that was kind of cute so I was like bless him <laughs> I'll let them be happy and the next character is Adriana who again not my favorite she could just be a real bitch and just really annoying but also she could be really cute though and she was nice so I don't know how to feel about her but she does undergo significant development throughout the series like in season one her drug addiction is really affecting her behavior so it's hard to know what she's actually like because it's messed with her brain so much and she does self-sabotage her own happiness but definitely when she gets off the drugs you see more of what her personality is like like season two I thought she was really really good when you see her with Teddy and then she realizes he doesn't want a relationship and you see how hurt she is it was very like sympathetic for her but then she becomes toxic again when she becomes famous because it totally goes to her head and she becomes this massive diva which is no surprise so she discovers that because she's been a terrible girlfriend Naveed lost interest but then he went behind her back and cheated on her with Silva rather than having the normal reaction like yelling at them being annoyed just dumping him Adriana reacts really extreme she feigns ignorance and innocence pretending she doesn't know when she knows so she can go behind their back and do stuff and I just thought that was so hypocritical because she literally cheated on Dixon and wasn't telling him and wasn't owning up to it so you can't then be annoyed like when you're cheated on because you've done the same thing but okay now onto the parents Harry and Debbie who are Annie and Dixon's parents not much to say about these two when I went into the vaults looked at my notes I was like okay not coming out with much but they're really good characters and they add a lot of depth to the early seasons of the show and it's nice also to have some parental figures there rather than just teenagers because obviously they are teenagers it's nice to be reminded that they are and have some adult authority figures some of their expectations for their children seemed very kind of unfair and harsh I thought like they're okay for Annie to date or for Dixon to date but then where they draw the line is sex which I thought was absolutely ridiculous like they're hormonal teenagers you're telling them yes you can date but also how dare you have sex I thought that was ridiculous like it's either date or don't date you can't be like there's degrees of dating like I'm sorry you guys can disagree with me on this but I think it's unrealistic and just too much to ask like date someone date them for months develop strong feelings for them but you're not allowed to have sex with them like if they feel uncomfortable with their children being underage and having sex and they should probably recommend to their children that they don't date at all until they're older or in uni do you know what I mean because then the lines get really blurred and then you're actually asking too much of your kids because you're saying look I know you're in a relationship with an amazing partner for like five months but you're not allowed to have sex with them you like don't have sex with your boyfriend like if they feel that strongly about it I feel like they would have been better off just advising Annie and Dixon not to date at all until they were older rather than like this whole this is where we draw the line what are you guys talking about like you're actually clowns both of you <laughs> really but they were also really funny though and really entertaining characters and I found their whole are we gonna separate like you know relationship disintegration thing really cool to watch it was very interesting but Debbie the mother I feel bad because often she exhibited a lot of motherly intuition and concerns or normal stuff and her concerns were often dismissed by Harry her husband like she would go to him say something about the kids and he would just not hear her out or she would say hey that fellow teacher at school I can tell she's flirting with you and he would just continually invalidate her feelings which were very valid I would absolutely hate being with someone like that like that is the worst thing ever when you have feelings that are completely legitimate and the other person just overrules them like what a travesty another thing I find weird is how Harry departs from the show in season 
three it was very abrupt like i'm guessing he left for another show but i would rather there was a really dramatic divorce or something that explained it properly maybe a tragic accident or something that would actually impact the story because he just disappeared and i was like where is he? Another thing I found weird is how when the kids go to college, like university, how they just never talk to their parents, like you barely see their mum. Like I understand you see your parents less when you go to uni, but I feel like Annie still would have had some level of involvement with her mother. So the way that her mum just kind of disappears off the radar is very odd. Like I know she's in uni, but some people, at least I do, like I'm in university, I still talk to my parents all the time. Like there's some people that do that and Annie seemed quite close with her mother so that's why I found it a bit strange but now we've covered that topic I believe it's time to shift our focus to Ivy the surfer girl again not much to say about Ivy kind of the same thing as Dixon what I'm I feel like she was a bit neglected she's really cool and I really like her but they just didn't do enough with her she just disappears as well in season five and I was like what and also because she was introduced later i'm sorry but she always felt like an outsider she never truly felt like she belonged because she wasn't there from the beginning like she feels separate from the cast in a way that dixon and annie just don't i thought it was very interesting her career path which is not associated with traditional well her career path is associated with traditional masculinity which is surfing but she's a girl and she was dealing with a lot of gendered bias because of that and prejudice as a surfer girl and like for instance feeling like she was one of the lads but that she wasn't dateable and just so many things that I wish could have been explored in more depth because I would have just liked to know more about that. Also her relationship with Raj really broke my heart because he got sick. She said she wanted to be there with him until the end when he died and he chose to overrule that and just break up with her in the most brutal way and leave her so she thinks he's just awful but actually what's happening is he's dying so he wasn't allowing her to make her own decision and decide if she wanted to be with him in his dying moments or not like his dying weeks which is time they lost they could have spent together because she would have wanted to be there she said as much when she found out she was like okay you're dying but i would have wanted to be there with you like and just spend time with you before you died so i feel like Considering her level of commitment to him, wanting to marry him, all this, he really should have given her a shot, I suppose, to like decide what she wanted and if she wanted to leave or not, rather than making the decision for her. But yeah, she is lovely, very loyal. How many people do that? Like, do you know the amount of times that two people are dating, one of them gets sick or hurt and the other one just leaves? Like, I know it's sad to say but like I think the statistic is slightly higher with men like when a female partner gets really ill or in a wheelchair or something like that the guy is more likely to leave than a girl is I guess because girls have been socialized to be carers more than guys have and like nurturers but I just thought what a woman like that he that it's very emotional very difficult and she just stays by his side and I thought what a babe you know like she's so nice but it was a bit weird how she just disappeared from the show <laughs> I was like is she doing another project like what's happening so overall love the show go watch it 10 out of 10 nostalgia i could talk about it for longer this is me like paraphrasing i'm just trying to get to the point there's actually so much more to say also what i thought was really cute is that anna lynn mccord and shanae who play annie and naomi they're literally really close friends in real life like best friends how cute is that like that is the cutest thing ever. I think they have a podcast together called Unzipped as well, which I really should catch up on, but they share gossip and stuff. They talk about things. They discuss their experiences in Hollywood at a young age. Just amazing that the show brought them together, really. When they first met on set, they weren't actually particularly close because there was a lot of off-screen drama unfolding. So they didn't get off on the best foot, but they got through it and now they're friends. Sinead was just 18 when the show began, which is insane because her acting is unbelievable. But yeah, really young. The others were like 20 and that's a lot of pressure on a young age. It wasn't really like the social media age of acting. It was slightly before that, before the whole iPhone thing. And McCord mentioned that they were part of that last wave of celebrities before social media kind of took over. And as a result, because they didn't, let's say, have their own Instagram to share behind the scenes, what happened is often, they talk about this on their podcast, but people were speaking for them and they were having their voices kind of stomped on so they were being misrepresented in the public. And the show premiered in 2008, which was a time when tabloids could be particularly harsh on celebrities. And at first, when they didn't like each other, 
they were having frequent fights basically off screen and so they weren't speaking to each other for much of their time on the show and it was like this toxic work environment and because it was this very difficult work environment it made it difficult for genuine relationships to flourish and they felt like they couldn't really be themselves and so the actresses didn't realize how well they would have gotten along until now and the public scrutiny made their feud worse because they were constantly being bombarded from the outside with all these stories about their relationship and they've acknowledged how difficult it was to distinguish the reality from the fractured narratives of the media but luckily they've been able to kind of reconcile this and genuinely bond and i think it's so sweet that now they're actually friends and that they kind of got through all that confusion um of being in that spotlight together and becoming famous and everything and that they're now they figured it out which is super cool also they're grown-ups you would hope that you can get over like sometimes when I, <laughs> you would hope you can get over it sometimes when I hear about like feuds or whatever that happened on Charmed now I'm like didn't this come out 20 years ago why are we still talking about this and who hated who and whose side are we on it's exhausting like can we all please grow up like what is going on but yeah thank you so much for watching guys make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you get all notifications next time I post and I will see you for the next video. Bye guys.